grinding through and making shitty games and like learning from it is really how you get into it. There's nothing stopping you from going out and teaching yourself how to do it. Or like if you want to like go work in an industry, you gotta build a portfolio and you gotta just go in and start making stuff. Hey everybody, you're listening to Very Interesting People, a interview style podcast where we sit down with talented independent creators to talk about their craft, share some stories, and inspire you to get out there and create something yourself. As always, I'm your host, Kiefer Campney. And with me today are the developers of Red Hot Vengeance, Alex Dahlgren, and Max Townsend of Bros Before Giraffes. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Hello. Uh, hi. So, for the people who don't already know what you are, can you tell everyone about your studio and what you guys do? We'll start first with Alex, and then we'll move on to Max. Um, So, we're just a small team of indie devs uh, based in Washington. We have like three members right now. It's myself, Max, and our other friend, Brandon. And um, yeah, I primarily write code for our games, and I also do design animations, 3D models, or whatever needs to get done. And Max... I uh, I do like design, so I primarily like work doing design and stuff. But I kind of like jack of all trades. I do like a lot of two D art, story writing. I do program. Like we kind of do everything, even though we have our titles kind of laid out. Yeah. yeah. Um. Like I I just primarily gravitate towards design and narrative. Alex is more of a programmer by heart, and Brandon does more uh, music. So, but we all we all kind of do a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like because we we got three people. Yeah. Whatever so. needs to get done. Like, one of us is just going to do it. Yeah. yeah. But, like, our official roles are, like, programmer, designer, sound guy, music man, something like that. Fair enough. And what got you guys all into game development? Was it a specific game or some person or a studio? Or is it just, like, general interest in the concept of making games? Um, for me, it was just the general interest in gaming. Um, like, when I was a kid, uh, I loved video games. And so I wanted to start making games. And uh, I think when I was in, like, fifth grade... That's when I started like trying to look for, um, you know, game development software or game engines or whatever. And I experimented with like a lot of different stuff. Like, like I used FPS creator and RPG maker and stuff. And then I found one oh, called, wow. I, I found one called game editor, but I couldn't figure out how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, eventually I found game maker and it was just like really straightforward. And I could, always, I could just like click a few things and then I'd have like a thing that moves and I was like, oh Yeah. And so that's what I stuck with. <laughs> um, how about you, Max? Uh, well, I, I actually have a story for this. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, boy. Um, so I had a, I actually had like never really ever considered like making games for a while. Like never, in thought never crossed my mind until I was like in middle school. I think I was like in seventh, sixth or seventh grade. So I was like 12, I think, or 11 or something. And uh, my friend, uh, his neighbor was like, I make video games for like microsoft we're like 12 years old so we're like whoa holy shit you you make games for microsoft he's like yeah like i've met bill gates and stuff and we totally believed him we're like whoa because you look kind of smart and so like he's like yeah and he like thinking about it nowadays he didn't know shit about game design he's just a pathological liar but like we're like well it's so cool and we thought like we're like we're gonna pick he told us like he was making a game where the guns were like modular it was basically like loadout if you haven't played that but it's like you yeah. can build your own guns and shit and he had all these cool ideas for it but it was like totally made up and he didn't know how to do it and so like my friend and i <laughs> were like writing a game to pitch him which was like oh wait okay if we make it simple like it'll like we thought it was like the thing that made games hard to make was the graphics so we're like if it's just stick figures and then we wrote like five pages of game like <laughs> like of game mechanics and then we're like okay and like we we didn't write anything down we were like spitballing maybe we show up to him and we like come up with this idea and he's like it could work the fact that the graphics are simpler means we can make it easier and like <laughs> like uh, like that's the deciding factor on whether or not we could make it and anyway he kept like talking about it and i ended up googling like some of the stuff he was saying like fact checking him and i was like oh this guy's full of shit and then i actually started teaching myself stuff with like game maker and rpg maker and stuff and yeah sounds like the kind of guy that's like yeah my dad works for xbox no, like, yeah. he literally, no, like, he, it was so bad that he told us his dad had, like, 
titanium plate. Like he said, like he's added like a titanium plate. Oh, he yeah. said like, yeah, he said his like bones were covered. He basically described what Wolverine was like adamantium bones. But it was like, yeah, my dad, like the army did all this stuff to him. We're like, okay, now we know for a fact this guy. Like <laughs> we didn't know before. <laughs> like, hold on. You might work with Bill Gates, but I don't think your dad's bones are covered in metal. All right. <laughs> That's remarkable. Uh, how old was this guy? Oh, your neighbor. Like 12. Like, we're children. Oh, okay. I was like, is he this? <laughs> yeah. He's like older than, t- like, you know, no, 16 years old. It's kind of worrying. But... No, he's just like a normal kid that's like the lie about making games, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you guys said you're all centralized and you said Washington? Yep. Or was yeah. It... Uh, yeah. So, how did you end up meeting? And is Brandon also in Washington as well? Yeah. Yeah, he's in Washington. Um, we ended up meeting through a mutual friend, um, because we went to different high schools, but, um, one of our friends uh, brought Max into like our Skype call, and yeah, yeah. and then I guess we hit we it were off. Like, yeah, because he was like, I got my buddy Alex, and he makes games. I'm like, oh, there's other people that do that, because yeah. like, <laughs> at least in the area we like we're from, it was kind of like smaller, and there weren't like a ton of opportunities to like learn how to do all that stuff. And when I was like, dang, there's a, another person like that I like in my vicinity doing it, and yeah, then Alex and I were like talking game maker and. Yeah, now we're in love and uh, yeah. never look back. No, <laughs> we're engaged. Yeah, we're engaged. No. We're, we have a, <laughs> we have five children. Uh, they're not wow. ours, but like, <laughs> who's are they? I don't know. <laughs> Some guys. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah. So, like, when you guys first uh, met, had you already been making games individually? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay Wait, were you max yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah obviously like, we, i made like rpg <laughs> you just said maker that. games i'm an idiot like yeah oh boy alex you made a lot of a lot of little yeah 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 and... i made i when i was a kid like i was just goofing off a of game maker but i have like folders like full of hundreds of uh unfinished projects a lot yeah. of them a lot of them i would just like make the project and then i would just like make one sprite and then i'd get bored and then i'd move on <laughs> Oh, and so, Alex, you did. You already had Bros Before Giraffes before we met. We should actually like. Yeah, that, that that is true. Like, like, I, I wasn't a part of it. Yeah, <laughs> Bros Before Giraffes was uh, myself and our friend Brandon, who does the music, and um, mm-hmm. and then we were. It was just us two making games, and before Max joined. Yeah. So. Yeah, because you guys have worked as Bros Before Giraffes is like, um, counting about nine games all together now with uh, red hot vengeance being the newest so when did you all three of you get together and start working on stuff at what um, point in time did that we happen? they our first actual collaboration is red hot vengeance wow yeah for all three like, of us well actually well no well yeah like the first game we've all been like like actively part of development like all the way mm-hmm. through because like we yeah. like technically like i published because i i made town of things in spooky cellar um like and i was just like hey alex like yeah because we didn't really have like a definitive date where I think like I started working like on like as Bros for Giraffes, we just kind of naturally fell into it. Where I was like, "Hey, like uh, I'm making this game. Like, if I release it under your like title and stuff, like you guys can act kind of like a publisher, and then we can like have both of our fan bases looking at it. Fan bases, like you know, both like yeah. we can have more eyes on our stuff this way. And yeah. Then it kind of turned into like, oh, I guess we're working to, like we're all together now in Bros for Giraffes, and we made. Yeah, mm-hmm. Red Hot Vengeance together. That's awesome. So working on Red Hot Vengeance, was it a new experience for you guys working as like a three person team with multiple people programming and shifting responsibilities back and forth? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I don't think I've ever worked this closely with another person on a project before. Besides like you know, school assignments where we do um where we write like apps or whatever. But we had it was kind of like a big learning curve to like figure out like a development pipeline and like syncing everything because we like switch from like dropbox to google drive to like all these things making like multiple accounts to, like get a bunch of <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, yeah like storage space and like we were like trying to like we weren't do- like like because alex was the only one who like worked in game maker um like in engine most of the time yeah and then like yeah brandon was solely on audio and i was mostly on like like i would we, we would get together and do like design and everything yeah. and, like design out like yeah gameplay yeah. mechanics and things like that together and um yeah it was like a it was it was really fun like it was a lot more fun like working together as like a group uh on something instead of kind of like on our own I, in my opinion yeah. i had a lot of fun with like it. we're every i think everyone was like crucial to the game's uh success so that yeah. that was definitely new 
Oh yeah. And like we, everybody was like, we'd get together and like, you know, play it and like shout out ideas and stuff whenever Alex would like have a new version ready. And yeah. it was like, it was really fun to like spitball ideas together. Kind of like a writer's room almost. And then do you think it would have been easier for you guys to work as a team that it is independently? Or are there like pros and cons no. for each? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. not. It is so hard. No. Nah. A lot sometimes we're waiting on each other to get our stuff done, but we're going to school at the same time and we have our lives and stuff, so <laughs> speak for yourself. I'm a big kid now. Well, okay. You were at <laughs> you were in you yeah. were still in school before Red released. <laughs> yeah. We kind of like released Red. Like it yeah. was funny because we were like crunching to get because we wanted to get Red done because uh, we'd been working out for so fucking long. And then I was like, the timing of it was like right as I was getting ready to graduate. So it was like doing graduation and then crunching on Red like yeah. to get all the because I kind of like had been waiting on Alex for a while before I wanted to commit to doing like a lot of the the storyline art stuff. And then Alex got like so much done. And then I was just like, oh, now I'm behind. And I was just cr cranking out my yeah. art at we, the we end. Call it, we internally, we call it Red. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Red yes. that, yeah. Too. Yeah. that was the original title before we came up with it out of Vengeance. Yeah. Would you ever get it confused with the Bruce Willis film? Yes. Red? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, oh. we, we were, we were um, we, like, we changed it because we knew that we needed a better title. Like, there's, like, the movie Red. And then there's like a flash it's game called color. red, and there's the co yeah, yeah, the color as <laughs> the well. Color. Yeah, that's yeah. like people might get like confused yeah. with the color. We thought, yeah, no. <laughs> well, because <laughs> we also had to learn, we learned the hard way with Town of Things, like that we need to make our game search friendly, because mm -hmm. like, that game was yeah. the least, like least, least uh, <laughs> search friendly game title ever. Town of Things. It's like the most generic, like jumble of words, and so like we're like, yeah, we need to. We need to make sure people can find this if they search for it in Google. That's something that a lot of people I don't think actually think of is that, yeah, the name that you have for your game, it might sound great, but has someone else used it before or is it going to be really easy to find? Because there's so many games out there that are just like, oh, like shoot game, like yeah. kill something. Yeah. Shoot game's the worst. But... Dude, you can't, <laughs> like you look that up on Steam, you're getting a million results. No one's uh, going to find it and you're sad. You also... You have to strike a balance too, because you can't be like too wordy. You can't be like "Red Hot Vengeance: The Reckoning of the Vengeance Red." Like you yeah. can't be, like because then that's just think, like too uh, much. Crows, like, Crows, Crows did a game I think that was like two sentences long, like the whirlwind heist and something emerald. It's like it's but, super wordy, but oh, I think that yeah. was that the one, joke was it's like, just that's super part of long. The meme, yeah, it's like, <laughs> So what's something that most people don't think of when it comes to game development? We're talking about titles, but what's something you guys have learned that you never really thought of until you started really getting into making games? Um, Max, do you want to answer this first? Fuck. Damn it. Dude. Like, you, like, neither of us have thought about something. Well, because it's, it's tough to think about, like, um, what people don't think about in game development because yeah. you're like, well, for one thing, like, we're in, like, so there's, like, different types of game development. So there's, like, indie and pro and all that, mm -hmm. like, yeah, why'd I call it pro? Anyway, Triple like, a. yeah, there's a bunch of different, like, types of game development. And, like, I think... Oh, man. This is, like, not a good answer. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No worries. I don't know. People don't really... I, this is a pretty, like, generic answer, I guess. But, like, I don't know. A lot of pe people just don't know what kind of work goes into the games. See, that's a way yeah. better answer, Do you see, Alex. like... like <laughs> okay, I'm. this is reminding me of, like, things I read on, like, Reddit all the time. Because, like... um. You know the game Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades? It's a VR yes. gun range simulator, basically. It's got some game modes in it. It's really cool. Um, it's got like 200 guns. Sound like an ad for the game. But basically, um, a lot of people, like, they suggest, like, features for that game. And then the developer, he's like, no, it's impossible. And then they reply to him. And they're like, oh, well, what if you did it like this? And it's like, well, they don't really understand how the game's coded. And they probably don't understand programming in general. Hmm. Yeah, and that like, yeah, that's really annoying. I see it all the time. It's the same thing. Like, uh, I I do work in film, and just recently I started doing more professional work as a uh, would you know a sound guy. That's all I'm good at. And uh, I had no idea. Like for a short film, it's 20 minutes long. You think, oh, this is super easy. Small crew, like five people. There's about 40 people working on it. it took three days, 12 hours each day. No oh, yeah. one would think that mm -hmm. that much effort goes into one little 20 minute thing, but there's a lot of stuff to do. And especially with games, they're thinking, oh, you know, Call of Duty is so boring. It's the same game every year. But yeah, they still have to make new assets every year. And if they change engines, they have to, even though it feels the same, there's a lot of effort going into making 
everything works so smooth every single time. Yeah. And same with like a ton of games. It's like, why don't you just make it better? Why don't you just add all this stuff to it? It's like people want to do that, yeah. but it's really hard. And you well, got to like, you know, like another big aspect to it. Like unlike, you know, like there's in, in film, you know, you have like, oh, you have your camera guy. You have this, you have X, Y, Z and all these different roles that you have to fill for every like piece of equipment. And like, yeah. and like you get on set and you're there to do it for like the day that you're there to shoot and like post it all that stuff. But with like games, you're not just doing like, well, yeah, like my main point is like, yeah, there's like way more, like, I don't want to like undermine like how much work goes into film. Cause I've also like done like short film stuff too. And it's like, it's a fuck load of work and like games, I guess like it's sort of like, there's just so many different types of people that you need to get together to work on a game. It's a whole different beast. It's the same idea, but with a lot of different like yeah. pieces for it. Yeah. Yeah. So since Red Hot Avengers was released, which was it was in July, July eleventh. So yeah, beginning of the summer. Since that was released, what have you guys been doing since then? And do you have any new stuff that you're working on right now coming out in the future? So we're uh, like. So, like, one thing also that, like, we're trying to do, Bros for Dress, we're trying to be very, like, transparent about our whole game development process. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, currently right now, like, what we ended up doing was we took, because, uh, like, we crunched, we did all this shit, like, to get Red out and get it done and just be done with it because we'd been working out for so long. And so we're like, let's just, like, we, we had, like, the amount of shit that goes into launching a game was kind of like a lot and like we had to keep oh, yeah. following it up for a few like a couple months afterward like just like kind of following it managing all the community stuff making sure we we're fixing bugs and like staying on top of like yeah, yeah. setting up it on setting up uh yeah the steam page and stuff that's like a lot of work yeah maybe that's something that i could have answered the last question with but oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> like because that's a lot of things that don't people don't think about but yeah. moving on to this one uh like ba like basically we did all that and we were just so burnt out we were like uh you know we needed to take a little bit of a break uh like i just graduated college and got a, a job like in the industry at a studio and ended up moving down and starting that right away like literally the like as we were launching red uh i was still working on cutscenes like with my laptop and my uh like drawing tablet in my backpack like writing them as i was like moving and switching over to this job and we launched it like my first week into my new job and so now it's been like us just uh like we took we said like let's let's take a bit of a break and like you know readjust because we're all like doing a lot like alex is a full-time student brandon's got like working on all of his music and everything too on top of our game stuff and like you know I, i'm like working at this like company and and also trying to do this this stuff too so like we put in a lot of work outside of what we're actually putting on bros for giraffes and we do dedicate time to like making content and making all these things uh, so anyway, that's a long answer of saying we're busy a lot of the time, <laughs> like long story <laughs> short, but we are actually working on uh, ideas. It's just uh, we're sort of in this phase where we're kind of pitching ideas for our next game and building it's like a up. brainstorming. Yeah, like ideas phase. Uh, yeah, like we like to build out like prototypes and like share them with each other. Or we'll like write up like ideas and we'll like kind of shoot the shit until something kind of sticks and like we're all really into it because you want something that everybody wants to work on, like that everybody's mm -hmm. passionate about. Um, yeah. And how long did you work on Red Hot Vengeance for? Uh, that was about three years. <laughs> yeah, so especially yeah, when yeah. you're trying to figure out the next project, if you're going to work on it for yeah. a year plus, you really want to make sure you're... Technically, it was even more. Oh, really? Yeah, if you count really... the uh, reboots, which it was rebooted yeah. like twice. Oh my well, goodness. not even well like not quite like a like we didn't release anything in reboot it was like yeah. we kept trying to make it and then we we're like eh, i don't want to make that and then we yeah. went back to it but the other two versions we, are like wildly different though like yeah. the first one we, was like yeah. a 2d platformer and um it, it, they both they all had like the same art style with like where like the weapons are red and everything else is black mm -hmm. and white but the first one was like a 2d platformer where you have like a katana and you're like fighting guys it's all melee and then like the second one was a top-down shooter in 3d like the first one, but it was like way different. That one was pretty bad because back then we were still like total noobs, <laughs> and that was yeah. and that was that was also before we met Max. But then when Max hmm. came in and we started working on the, the Red Out Vengeance we know today, that's when yeah, it got started, came together. Started doing shit, started kicking you and your brand in your little butts. Yeah, said to work. <laughs> I'm the boss net now. No, that's not at all what happened. It was more like, hey, Alex, like this game's kind of neat. We should keep making this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did Red Hot Vengeance affect your personal lives quite a bit? Other than it, it did end up getting a lot of eyes on it. 
I remember I, I found it in a PC Gamer article. It's in games you haven't played yet. And Wait, really? uh, as soon as that, <laughs> yeah, I think oh, yeah, I uh, when I, I first met article. you guys, yeah, we were on PC it was a PC Gamer. It's uh, one of their articles they do every once in a while. It's like five games you probably missed last month. And I usually read those because I find a lot of really awesome games. Day it came out, read it. You guys had like maybe 30 reviews. And then last time I checked before this interview, you're at like well over a thousand. And so I was like, yeah, did that really, (laughs) was that a big deal for you guys that, oh my gosh, people are playing our game and they're liking it too. That was, that was huge. And when we hit overwhelmingly positive, like that's like an elite. Oh yeah. (laughs) No, we were like, cause you have to remember too, like before Red Hot Vengeance, like our, like the most downloads we got was on Spooky Seller, which is around, I think we got like around three, 4,000 downloads on that. And Red Hot Vengeance, where are we now at with that, Alex? We're like. Um, last I checked, it was like 80,000. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's probably up to like 90. Yeah. I mean, like, no, I it know. was great. Like, it's insane, like, how fast, like, the down, like, yeah, just how many people we got on it. Cause, like, we even saw, like, a, co- didn't Kotaku or so- some shit? Like, we popped up in a bunch of articles, like, PC Gamer or whatever you were reading. And yeah, there was a Kotaku yeah. article. It was, like, in, I think in the same vein as the PC yeah. Gamer article. It's just like a list of games they but had it was, played. Like, crazy. Cause we did not, ex- we were like, okay red hot vengeance like like we were like okay we're not even gonna say it out loud but like maybe if we can get ten thousand downloads like just maybe that would be our like best goal ever and we like blew past it in the first yeah. week like <laughs> yeah it was insane um, yeah. um a big yeah. part of it i think was like timing like that's another like if you like to a lot of like other people developing indie games and things like that too out there it's like timing like the timing of when you release your game is huge that's like another thing people overlook a lot i think oh yeah yeah i think so many people yeah, wonder yeah, yeah. uh like oh i the thing that i've noticed that's kind of changed now with the indie space becoming bigger was that big blockbuster movies release on thursdays big blockbuster games used to always release on tuesdays really don't know what the idea for that was but i remember i was like a little high school kid i'm that's like i'm right, pre-ordered right. halo odst i'm like oh it comes out on tuesday we'll go pick it up and then I go, like, a couple years later, Halo Reach. Oh, that's also on a Tuesday. And then my friends are like, yeah, I'm going to the Mass Effect launch. It's on Tuesday. I'm like, what is going on right now? Tuesday. Oh, my Tuesday? God. <laughs> What's coming out today? Quick. Red Dead Redemption? Yeah. Could yeah, have Red Dead Redemption comes Red out Dead next Dead week. Red Dead 2 on PC. Uh, it's on PC oh, next dang. week. Yeah, on Tuesday. Oh, on a Tuesday. <laughs> Full circle. Yeah. Alex, there job. you go. Marketing 101. Yeah. So yeah, marketing one hundred and one. Release your game on a um, Tuesday. I think um, I think making Red Hot Vengeance free helped a oh, lot because yeah. like um, there's a lot of reviews that say they'd pay a few dollars for it, and yeah, maybe it is worth a few dollars, but um, I don't think anyone, I don't think as many people would would have uh, bought it. Yeah. Like who buys who buys games for like five? Well, okay, I think some I, people. See, people always say, you know. who plays, plays $5 games? I, my my well, Steam library is like 300 weird, games, okay. and most yeah, of them are yeah. less than like That's 10 right. bucks. Because we, we, we ran in... That's right. We did talk before, and he said yeah, that. I love, yeah, I love I love cheap <laughs> I indie games, because like, I found some really <laughs> yeah. good gems in there, yeah. in like the dollar bin on Steam. So Well, it's amazing, because we yeah. realized like, another thing, too, is like making our game free helped and hurt us in some ways, yeah. too, because... like because we were free um like some places won't cover you because they only cover the top games that are paid for so like we mm-hmm. had like a competitor uh mm. shit what was the name of it alex the the hong kong massacre hong kong massacre came out it was a top down uh oh, yeah. top down shooter it got covered on ign and like i think fun Haas played it and we got tons of media coverage but we actually checked they still it. don't have as yeah many they don't downloads. have as many downloads as us but we didn't get like coverage on ign and shit like that because we're like well, one, we're not like a big studio, and two, because our game is free, like the games that they cover, they're like a guide, a buyer's guide for their for yeah. games. So, because you guys are yeah. self published. So, if you guys had a publisher, do you think you would have gotten like, you know, review copies sent out to those like press outlets, or it's is it entire... just like luck of the draw? Yeah, well, probably. Maybe because it's dependent on who your publisher is, too. Because, mm-hmm. like, for larger studios, publishers make sense because you need to pay the bills and you need to keep, you know, you need to be paying for like making a massive game and paying for like everybody's salaries and all of their like insurance and all that shit. Uh, like in for indie games, it's a bit like, yeah, you, you, you can cover your own personal expenses and stuff, but we were just like a publisher wouldn't really have done much for us outside of marketing. And at that point, just mm-hmm. hire a marketing agency or something. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. We were only able to release Red for free, really, because, like, we just kind of... We did everything ourselves, yeah. so it's, like, a $0 mm-hmm. budget. Yeah. 
So we didn't really have to pay off any expenses with it. Excuse me if I'm prodding a bit, but did a publisher come out to you guys afterwards and say, hey, we want to pick up your next game or anything like that? Did you mm -hmm. ever get any like calls from companies like, hey, we want to buy you out? There were like people that like that. The, yeah. There was like a yeah, there was like a really sketchy email. I think. Couple. Like we got a couple actually like they yeah. were like one was like a couple like Chinese developers stuff like that. But they were like, yeah, we want to publish Red Hot Vengeance right now. And we're like, it's already out. Like, <laughs> we don't need your help. We're already yeah. doing well enough without you. Like, that was the weird, weird thing with that, but wouldn't yeah, have done well yeah. in China anyway. There's, like, so much blood. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do they censor bloody oh, games? yeah. You can't do... They censor blood, okay. skeletons, uh, sex. Skeletons? Yeah, skeletons. No, a lot of games in China, the blood is, like, green. They, like, swap it out. But, uh, yeah. Like, uh, I, I knew they did that in, like, Germany, yeah. but... They did it in Germany for a while. I think they just changed that. But, yeah. Dude, the, it was so funny. Did they, didn't they also just change, like, like you can have swastikas yes. now in games, yeah. as long as it's like uh, tasteful. Yeah, or you can't just like throw yeah. a swastika in for fun. It's got to be yeah. like a context. Can you do like? Yeah. Can you do like a cross on a health pack, if it's a swastika though in German, right? <laughs> I don't know if you, yeah, that that you might should... be like a really out there joke reference. If you're not like, I just realized like after <laughs> like so the Red Cross, yeah. you can't make games with like a red plus on a white like uh, health pack anymore because the Red Cross will. What about a white plus? On well, a we red did that for Red Hot Vengeance, pack. but like that's why most yeah. games now do a white plus on a red background because you, if you do a red plus on a white background, Red Cross will sue you. So. Oh wow! That wasn't just like a weird. It doesn't obscure. doesn't like. <laughs> I don't I don't remember who said this. If it might have been you, Keith, I don't know, but like someone does. Oh no, it wasn't you. It was someone else. But like Overwatch has like an H for health. Yes. Yeah. Or yeah. something. Yes, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Red, I thought the Red Cross was to help people, not just you know sue people for stealing their branding. <laughs> but you know, yeah, they're like, hold on, Dude. we own red pluses, not you. You can't put a red. <laughs> like it seems like a generic enough symbol. Like to... <laughs> it's uh. like there's some companies that they like, trademark a specific color code. So like, yeah, this shade of yellow, it's mine, buddy. You can't use that. Yeah, sorry, against the dish. rules. My mm -hmm. my mustard pea yellow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now that we've kind of we've wrapped up most of the questions, I only got one more for you. Do you have oh, any shit. advice or tips for you know aspiring game developers looking to get into the scene, or people that are already in there that just might need the little extra motivation to get their project finished? Max, do you have anything oh, for I this? I got. I actually, this is one I actually do have. Uh, oh, a just dump your knowledge on us, please. All right, good, uh, good. let me just uh, take off my pants here. No, uh, so <laughs> the, the uh, damn. Now I just like distracted myself with that funny take off my pants joke. Oh, now I remembered, dude. I'm like so ADD. I like get distracted so easy. Um, yeah, like a lot of people like making <laughs> games today. Like something huge that like the reason Alex and I are here today. I don't. know, It sounds so weird because I still got imposter syndrome about this shit. But like just like you have to kind of just get down and start making games like i mean it, it's dumb as it sounds like really just like grinding through and making shitty games and like learning from it is really how you get into it and like there's nothing stopping you from going out and teaching yourself how to do it or like if you you know want to like go work in an industry you got to build a portfolio and you got to just go in and start making stuff like because one of the biggest things that people don't realize is like if you finish a game, you already have a massive leg up on your competitors. Like a lot of people like exit like college or exit like whatever they're doing and they haven't like worked on any game or anything like that. And they'll sit down and be like, yeah, I got, you know, computer like, like I have like a degree in like computer science and stuff. But if you've never, if you don't know anything about game development or if you haven't actually like worked on anything, even like a side project on your own, it makes it a lot harder for you to get into it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I mean like take it, kids today are like, way more resources than we had too i mean like we were just talking to somebody in our discord that's like they have a game development class at their high school it's like seize those resources and like you know make the most of it because like it, yeah it's exciting time yeah there's a lot of people like in my at my school like they're, they're cs majors but they like a lot of people don't like ever like even try to like make games like i don't know i, I don't know why i don't know why more people who are into like coding and stuff don't try to do it yeah because like I was having a just like you know I was having a discussion with some people at class and we were talking about like oh like what do you do in your spare time everyone's talking about what they do and then they're like they asked me and I'm like oh I, I don't know I just make games and they're like what you make games <laughs> like it's a huge surprise yeah 
But it's like, I know how to code. I like video games like everyone else does. Yeah. I don't know. I, I It's kind of weird to me. I mean, even for people I've known, like some computer science majors, and they've even just tried it, because even if you don't end up making anything good, even if you're just a computer science major, it's great practice, because it's just another yeah. type of program yeah. you can work on and hone your skills on. Like, yeah, it's, exactly. I don't know, that's the same answer I've gotten from a ton of people, but it's just, it always rings true. It's like, yeah, just make stuff, even if it's bad. Like, one thing that I've, I've heard from a, a friend of mine, like, if you make something and you really don't, you don't have to put it out, but just finish a project yeah. and know that you've been able to do it. And then yeah. you've already improved and you do it the second time and it's better than like as many times as you need until you make something that's great and put it out. A huge thing too is like by the time you finish a project, you're usually looking back on it like, oh man, I could like make this whole thing so much better now. Like when we were wrapping up Red, exactly, our heads are swimming yeah. with ideas and we're like, we just need to commit to what our like gameplay mechanics are and, and put it in. But like, like by the yeah. time you finish a project, you know so much more every time. And like, like, like Alex said, like you have like what hun like hundreds of 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 game projects you never finished or released or anything, but you still like are yeah. doing it and trying things out. Like even like, even though like we're working on like Red Hot Vengeance, like every once in a while we'll kind of goof off and make a little game that we never. I guess our advice was just finish something. Now we're saying yeah, make little things and don't finish them. But like experimenting around with like game mechanics things like that or little projects is always fun and yeah, yeah a big yeah. part of it though like for you because like to, you do need to release something and have stuff like stockpiled up for your portfolio but yeah yeah the whole point the main the main piece of advice i'd give is just like like stop thinking about it and just sit down and do it and like just make stuff and if you have an idea for like a more involved game like like red hot vengeance or something have a plan for it because yeah. like we didn't really ha we didn't really have like a concrete plan and things kind of just changed over time. Like, well, we had a plan at the beginning, but then, like, I don't know, everything, like, changed. Yeah. Like, or, like for example, originally, we were going to have, like, monologuing from the player as you're playing the level, like in Max Payne. Mm -hmm. But um, then, I don't know, it it didn't, I don't know, it just wasn't working out. So, like. That's a good thing to just test stuff. Yeah. Even if you think it's a good idea, just yeah. implement it. See if it works. If it does, great. If it yeah, doesn't, that's, that's you know, you learn something. Yeah. Yeah, and not I guess not everything is going to work even if you do have it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it'll it'll planning it out though it's like, like a big thing. A big thing too is but yeah. like knowing your limitations and making something that you can feasibly make cuz there's so many comments that are like, "Yeah, I'm working on a sandbox Grand Theft Auto thing and it's my first game." And it's always like, "Okay, you don't know yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. doing and you're not going to finish that." <laughs> I've seen some horror stories of like Kickstarters like $2 million Kickstarter for like, "Yeah, we're going to make a a perfectly accurate like realistic simulator game." all these oh, assets yeah, and then it's like yeah we have a team of like two people we're gonna yeah. work on it I'm like okay yeah there's, <laughs> there's this one kickstarter i saw where they like they wanted to make like a game of thrones battle royale and they were like they didn't really have anything they just had like a vague description of how the game would work yeah. and all the comments like they donated one dollar just to tell them that they don't know what they're doing oh no they were so they were like really confident about getting the license to game of thrones to do it <laughs> oh Oh, I thought when you said Game of Thrones, like, inspired. No, they wanted to license... Okay. No, no, they, <laughs> they wanted to too. license Game of Thrones and make a Game of Thrones battle royale. Oh, right my now. God. <laughs> but you know what? Just because some people say they can do it and they can't do it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Mm. Someone out there, go make that Game of yeah. Thrones battle royale. Do it really good. Prove yeah. them wrong. But if that, exactly. Yeah. But if that's, like, if that's, like, your idea for, like, your first game, like, you need to take a step yeah. back. Oh, yeah. It doesn't like, mean you can't do narrow it your scope. It means just, like, it's not... The time is not right yeah. now. Like, yeah. Even if you could do it, they're not gonna they're not gonna give you the game to license. Wait, make a really good game and then be like, yo, we made this. Yeah. You should give us that license. Yeah. That's yeah. that's good advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that's eggs, one basket. That's what I say. That's that's <laughs> my motto. <laughs> advice about uh, Kickstarters. If you're making a game a Kickstarter for your game, like have a, a like a a prototype that you can actually yeah. play. Yeah. Well, because a lot that is so and like big. show some gameplay in your video. I'm sure like, this happened to you, so Alex. But like, I've got I've definitely had people that go up to me and they're like, "Oh, you make games? Well, hold on, I've had this idea for a game." And they come up to you and pitch an idea, but you're like, like a, a big thing too is you're like, "Yeah, but you need to have technical knowledge to back up that idea and see it to fruition." And like, that's the big like part that you have to build out. Like yeah. Alex and I, when we were starting out making games, is like we have all these great ideas and things like that, uh, but you you can't yeah you can't start with it you got to build towards it mm -hmm. well thank you so much for coming on you guys and now is the time for you to promote yourself so your twitters your instagrams your discords games especially since you have games people can play right now where can people yeah. find them 
So you can find um, links to basically all our games on brosbeforegiraffes.com. Yeah, we got a um, website. You could just search. You could just Ooh. search Red Hot Vengeance up on Steam if you wanted to. Just yeah. Play that. I, did we ever um, explain what Red Hot Vengeance is? It's a game yeah. where you shoot stuff. Yeah, I think it is. Down. That's true. <laughs> <But> it's <laughs> really good. I don't. <laughs> okay, Red Hot Vengeance is a twin stick shooter. Really it's good that we're explaining game. this as we're plugging our shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can find us on itch.io and gamejolt.com, bros before giraffes. And um, Twitter is bros before giraffes, and the before is B and number yeah. four. You can find me um, at Nordic Chicken on Twitter. Uh, we like, I tweet. I try to, I used to be tweeting every day, but uh, once once we're actually like in full swing development, we'll probably get some more tweets on there. Um, yeah. all right. YouTube, oh, so. bros before giraffes. <laughs> oh, yeah, YouTube. We got. We got oh you can find Brandon's stuff. Is he going by Avian or something now? Like still, no, or? he's going by Brandon Morehouse now. Just oh, his name. Bleep, do you bleep things on this podcast? I can bleep stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah. I can just <laughs> cut you. it out. I don't think <laughs> okay. I don't think Brandon's gonna mind being promoted. Oh yeah, yeah I'll yeah. promote him. Yeah, yeah. Let's promote Brandon his... too. You can fi- you can follow him at Horse Are Good on Twitter. He he's our music man. You guys have some really good ads. Yeah. It's pretty good, pretty good ads. Nori Chicken and a horse are good. Where did Bros Before Giraffes come from? I guess just to finish this off. Um, so one time I was with my friend who's actually not part of Bros Before Giraffes, but one time he was just like, came up to me and he was like, Bros Before Giraffes. And we thought it was really funny. And then years <laughs> later, I remembered that. And then that's, and that's Bros Before Giraffes. There you go. The rest is history. Yep. Oh, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> that's it. Anything else you want to promote or is that everything, guys? Uh, I'm building a giant blimp to the moon, and I want everybody to give me money. So please send me all the money. Thank flexible you. funding. Yeah, <laughs> flexible <laughs> funding. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's good. Thanks, guys. <laughs> all right, thanks for having us on. Yep, thanks. As always, thank you all so much for listening. Hopefully, you take some time out of your day to go check out Bros Before Giraffes. I can personally say that Red Hot Vengeance is absolutely fantastic and you definitely need to try it out if you're at all interested. However, if you are interested in more very interesting people, you can check our podcast out on all your favorite podcast platforms. We got iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. We got them all. Just look up Very Interesting People Podcast. It should be the very top one on the page. It'll be the number one spot, I promise you. You can also check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at the VIP Cast. If you want to support the show even further, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Campney. That's me. And that'll help fund the show as well as the other projects that I produce. Thanks again, and hopefully you stick around because we have plenty more very interesting people coming right your way.